Hi, everybody. Welcome to the reboot of Lead with Love. Today, we're going to have three or four topics of different areas that we're going to cover and share with you those things that have come to light, whether it be through the media or through just plain experience. Basically, you know, my personal experience, try to share with you some of the things that went wrong and some of the things that you can help with, one of those being dental insurance claims. So stay tuned right now. Lead with them. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Greco. For the next 30 minutes, you'll be talking about leading with love, L-O-V-E, learn, offer, value, and educate. This comes from my book, Love is the Answer. L-O-V-E is the answer. It's, it's available on at lulu.com or through amazon.com. Lee, it's it's uh, love is the answer. L-O-V-E, learn, offer, value, educate, is the answer. And you can uh, find it that way in my with my name, lulu.com. So let's talk about the different topics we're gonna talk about today. Because I think that's important to take them one at a time. First of all, and this is very important, and um, and just understand that I, I think of a lot of reference material. There's a lot of books that can be used as reference material. And one of those books is the Bible. And um, some people may find that offensive, and I'm sorry. Uh, if you find the Bible offensive, if you find that quoting the Bible is offensive, if you find that using the Bible is offensive, um, then, you know, by all means, you know, I, I truly understand that. Uh, the second topic is going to be about dental insurance claims. And the third is going to be talking about music as data, which is, interesting into of itself. But today I'm going to talk about um, Jesus as the first one. Jesus is a great project manager. And I think, you know, I was in church the other day and I was, I was listening to this reading and it's from Luke and it's really, it's, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole reading, but I think it's very important to understand, you know, that there's a lot of common sense. There's a lot of common sense out there. And this is a, a piece of common sense. And I think it's really interesting how Luke quotes Jesus during this area. Um, and uh, when he does that, he is, um, it's just, it's, it's very, very interesting. And I just want to take a few minutes to do that. And then we'll talk about dental insurance claims. Um, <clears throat> so this is, this is the, uh, the reading here. And uh, it's from uh, Luke 14, 25, 33. And this is from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. It is, you know, the, the Catholic side of it. Uh, again, you know, some people might say, oh, well, you know, I'm a Protestant or, you know, I don't, I'm Presbyterian. I don't really believe in the Catholic stuff. I get all that. Um, and you can look that up in your own Bible, you know, look Luke 25 uh, or Luke 14, 25 to 33. And there may be a different, there may be a different aspect of it. But this is the one I want to talk about is, um, which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Now, how common sense is that, right? How common sense? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, the one, this one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. The one thing that's covered in project management, and it's, it's covered over and over and over again, are resources, right? It's, you know, yes, there's requirements. And you have to have, you have to have the ability to have requirements, right? And the requirements are important because that is, that is absolutely the number one thing. And a lot of people sit back and they go, you know, what is that? Requirements. You have to have requirements, good, solid requirements, not just, uh, we'd like to have a bridge. What kind of bridge do you want? How long is it going to be? What, you know, what do you want it to, 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 to link? What's it, you know, all of a sudden it goes all these different things. Construct a tower, a tower for what? Are you going to have just a, is it going to be a brick tower? Is it going to be a metal tower? What's it going to have on top? Is it going to be a cell phone tower? Is it going to be a, a, a tower to, to take power across? Is it going to be a tower? What kind of tower are we talking about? So all these things have to go on there. And with every single requirement, and I, I tell this to all my project management trainees, with every single requirement, right? So one requirement um, equals one e equals one or more risks, right? So one requirement, you have one requirement, you have one or more risks for that requirement. So every requirement you make, every single one, 
should have an associated risk with it. Now, a lot of times people take the requirements and risks and they separate those. They go, oh, what's the risk on this project? Just take your requirements. Take your requirements and then you go to the risks. But all that to be considered is that which is that what it is. You know, the onlookers should laugh at him and say this one began to build but did not have the resources finished. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether the 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, well, he's still far away. He will send a delegation to ask for peace, for peace terms. So, so this is what I'm talking about. We talk about different aspects and we talk about, you know, especially when you talk about, you know, using different references. And a lot of people don't realize that the Bible is a great reference as are other religious texts. Don't get me wrong. I'm, you know, it just happens that I came across this one, but I, you know, if you're in church and you come across another reference, uh, you know, theological reference, you, you can, you can use that. It's, you know, it's not that, you know, it's, th it's not the common sense is narrowly defined in the Bible. That's it. It doesn't work that way. You know, common sense is common sense and it's, and it's throughout our, you know, whatever references you want to read. So all these things taken into consideration, you have that you have that ability to take a look at your references and then use them for what you need to do. So that is that is a very important part of that. And I wanted to cover that because I think it's funny that we come across these things. I just want to share them with you. That's what this show is about. This show is about sharing. It's about you know sharing different aspects. And look, if you want to share something, if you want me to share something on the air, there's there is the the there is the email right there. Just give me an email and say, hey, Chris, something happened to me I want to share. I'd be more than happy to give you credit on that. That's not a problem at all. But this is a learn, offer, value, educate. This is, you know, I learn. And then from the learning, I offer it to you because I value you. I value you as an individual. I always, it's, it took me a long time to do that, a long time to value people you know, as, as a person I need to share with and, you know, keeping knowledge, when you keep knowledge, it's, you know, what, what's the, what's the phrase? If you have a light, why keep it under a basket? I mean, it makes no sense, you know, share the light with others. So that's what I'm trying to do is share, share with you that aspect. So let's talk about the second, the second topic that we're going to talk about today, which is dental insurance claims. This is pretty important. So I want to make sure that I, that I cover it I covered very well. So what I did was I tried to, to put as many things as possible in here so that, um, so that it works. So I, I tried this doodly. It's, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. So basically what we're going to talk about today, and, and this is, this is kind of the aspect that we want to cover is, you know, dental insurance, right? And then we have, and then the different, the different subtopics, you know, what to pay, right? What do I pay? When do I pay it? Right. Very important. And then should I pay it? <laughs> you know, that, you know, should I pay it? So what to pay and what we're going to do is, is, is start there, right? What does the explanation of benefits say? What they call the EOB, right? And, and we'll talk, we'll actually give an example of an EOB here in a second, but um, does it have zero in the amount you owe, right? So these questions, when we talk about these questions, what to pay is what does your EOB say? And then, you know, does it have a zero, zero dollar amount in the amount you owe column? And then, you know, these questions are really the most important. And because of that, we are going to, we're going to take a look at an EOB, an actual honest to goodness EOB here. So um, this is an EOB. Right. This is a, now everything is redacted that, that has to do with that. But you see, you know, there was a porcelain ceramic crown here. There's a core buildup. And then you have here amount you owe. Now I'm going to bring this up a little bit here so you can see it. The amount you owe is zero dollars. Zero dollars. Now it just so happens that the insurance company and the dental clinic uh, have an agreement that they, the dental clinic will not charge will not charge you any more than the insurance company will allow. <laughs> and this is, this is very, very important. When I called the insurance company about this, they basically said that, that this was, this was the deal, that they will not, the dental, the dental clinic will not charge you any more 
than what is allowed through the procedure by by the um, the the uh, um, the dental the dental area the dental insurance. So the amount allowed is zero, and the, but your amount you owe is zero. And this is in blue, but for a reason, right? The amount you owe is zero. And then it talks about the different notes, and those notes are very important, and you need to read those notes, right? Rejected due to restricted documentation. The required documentation was not submitted. Your provider has been has been um, contacted. So at this point, and I think this is this is very important. At this point, we sit down and we say, okay, you know what happens next, type thing. So so what do we do, right? So it's all about the money. It's all about aspects. So now we talk about the different the different aspects of you know, the main issue in this whole thing is that patients feel the need to pay the bills. I know I do. If I get a bill, then I feel the obligation to pay it. Um, and it seems to be the case with older patients, you know, the seniors that are out there, they, they, get, a, they get a bill and most of them will pay it. Some of them will fight it, which I've learned fighting it is better. The dental office may send you a bill saying you owe the amount on the bill. But what you need to do is check to see what that bill is and check to make sure that it's not it's not charging you for something that the insurance company says you owe zero dollars. OK, if the amount you owe on the bill is different from the EOB amount, pay only the amount owed on the EOB. And you call them and you tell them, look, the explanation benefits say I owe this much. That's how much you're getting. You know, and that's and that's it, because basically what they're saying is with this, and, and this is this is pretty important too. Um, I was told this when you when they put here the amount you owe, when they put it the amount you owe is zero, right? Because I think that's that's pretty important. When they put the amount you owe is zero right here. So basically, what that means is is that means you owe no money. They can't bill you. The, the dental, the, well, I mean, they can, of course. The dental office can bill you, but you call them and you say, look, the EOB says uh, amount I owe is zero. I don't give you any money till the insurance company, because you're a you know, premier partner, or whatever you want to call it, with the insurance company. I don't owe you any money till these insurance claims are properly filed and properly, properly completed. If the, and the thing is, and my mistake, and and you know, it's a mistake that I, I admit readily, is I paid my bill. So once I paid the bill, they had their money, and they probably had more money from me than they would have gotten from from the actual insurance claim. So basically, what happened is is that I gave them actually more money than I needed to give. You know, I, I probably needed to give them. Um, that is my fault. It's totally, I, I take absolute responsibility for that. My lack, you know, ignorance is no excuse of the law. Same thing here. You know, I messed up. Now, you know, I, I, I fought it somewhat and I was able to get some money back, but not, not nearly the, the amount that I actually paid in. And that's okay. Bottom line is, is I don't blame the dental office because the dental office, they're out to make money and that's, they give you a service and they expect to be paid, right? And I don't blame the insurance company because the insurance company is trying to do their best to do whatever they can do to send you EOBs and whatever else. Next time I know, I read the bill, I read this whole thing, I read amount you owe is zero, I pay nothing, zero. If they give me a bill, I call them and say, I'm sorry, but until this claim is settled and whatever else, I still owe you zero dollars, zero cents. If you want, if you want any more information or whatever else, contact the insurance company, you contact the insurance company and you take it out with them. In the meantime, I owe you no money. And the thing is, the nice thing about this is this is all legal documentation. So if they attempt in any way, shape or form to go for collection or anything else, as long as you keep these EOBs and as long as you document what you're doing and every so often you may maybe call the insurance company, make sure everything's okay. Bottom line is, is that you can take all that and uh, you can pretty much fight any type of collection or anything else that they have to do. So don't be scared. Don't be scared to you know make make that known. But that is what we're talking about. So um, getting back to the to the actual presentation. So if the amount you owe is different, remember you only owe the amount on the EOB. So I mean that's 
that's what it does. And that's, you know, there's, here's your invoice, right? And the invoices, you know, talks about different aspects and what's going on and all that. So this is, you know, and interestingly enough, when you talk about a bill and you get a bill, you know, it gets scary, right? Because all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know, what, what do we do? What, how's that all work? Right? So it's, it's not, you know, a call to the dental office will usually be warranted should the bill arrive and not reconcile with the EOB. You got to call them because they may not know. The billing and the it, the billing department and the claim submission department may not even be, you know, talking to each other. So you have to be careful about that. You know, make sure that everybody knows what's going on, right? So if you know the dental, the, the amount is especially important of the dental officer is a if the if if so not of if the dental office is a partner with your dental insurance. If they're a partner, and my the insurance company told me they cannot charge you any more than is allowed by the insurance. I mean, when they told me that, it was like, wow, that's that's part of the deal with the dental office? That's correct. So basically, that was, I was like, wow, you know, that's a very, very interesting. I, yeah, I just, you know, I know that's the way it's supposed to go, but I never realized it's the way it does go, right? So, I mean... It's, it's those types of things when we talk about, you know, how we're doing and what's going on there. You know, we'll only accept the amount allowed by the insurance company. That's it. The caveat, right? That partnership, that's a partnership. They can, some call it premier partnerships, come, some call it, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's just, you know, it's those types of things. So that's what we're talking about. So, you know, the summary is this, you know, always check your EOB when you get it, right? Always check to see how much you owe. Always call the dental office if you have any questions or anything else that you have to do with that. I mean, it, it really it really is interesting from the standpoint of people and they talk about different aspects of it and you know and oh yeah, and one last thing. If you already have an account on your dental off and dental insurance, you know, website, you know, you can track your claim. And that's what they said to do, you know, and, and the nice thing about it is, you know, this could be useful if you have any issues, if you have anything that goes along with that, if you have any, you know, if something happens in a specific um, procedure, you know, then you can, you have that ability to be able to do what needs to be done to, to make that, to make that claim good. Right. So, I mean, you do not want to spend any more than you need to, especially on people with fixed income. Right. I mean, if you if you do, if you want to do that, well, then, you know, there's going to be an issue because if you want to if you if you want to spend more money, go for it. Any company, anything that gives you a service, you want to spend more money for it, they'll take it in a second. But you, you don't want to do that. You want to pay you want to pay that which is just that which is deserved, earned, whatever you want to call it. You know, and it's and the thing is, is that, you know, I, I get real antsy whenever I get a bill. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to pay this bill. You know, I don't want, I don't want, you know, because it, it, it will act on your credit rating. I mean, if you don't, if you don't act on a certain bill, if you don't pay a bill, you know, that could, that could develop into a credit rating issue. So it's best to get that reconciled right away. Call the dental office, call the dental insurance company, you know, make sure that everything is covered. Make sure the situation is, and I know it's a pain. I know it's inconvenient. I get it. You know, this, this bit was six months, seven months in the making. You know, I just, I was just a mess. And, um, and I learned, I learned a good lesson. I really did learn a good lesson from this whole thing. So that's, that's basically, you know, the areas I wanted to cover today. Um, the last thing I wanted to cover uh, was, um, uh, was the, uh, music as data. And I just wanted to cover this real quickly, you know, and, and the show, I used to have the data show and that's why I think this lead with love. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take this into the data aspect and into the worldview. It's going to try to cover a lot more things because, um, uh, it seems people, they, they love these little, little snippets, boom, 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 boom. You know, it, when you go into something and you go on and on, people just don't like to do that. So music is data. What is music? So music, everyone sits back and goes, how in heaven's name can you possibly have music as data? Well, let's take a look at this real quick. And I think this is, this is kind of cool. Um, 
so I'm going to go to um, uh, I'm going to go to well, first of all, I want to you know make a make a shameless plug. That analyst walks into a bar graph. Just want to let you know, you know, it's on Amazon. It's uh, it's my book. It has to do with uh, funny, um, uh, funny research studies, things that seem a little bit ridiculous. But anyways, that, that's the way it goes. So let's talk about this for a second. So let's talk about um, what they call the. Uh, I'm going to put in here the magic formula of music hits, right? And uh, and say, you know, what is that? 10 secret pop music formulas, right? Uh, simply put, there's no magic formula that allows songwriters to write hit songs. Establish guidelines, do that, right? Um, then it says, oh, songwriting formula, eight tips for 2020, right? Song length, don't bore us, get to the chorus. Uh, hook, line, and sinker, memorial, uh, memorable hook. Key to success, believe it or not, whether song is, can be uh, merit. So all these things, they do that. Now, how do they do that? How do they get this type of formula? How do they figure it out, right? You know, is there more, for TikTok song success, showcase the magic formula for making hit music, uh, the hit songwriting formula, eight tips for, you know, eight tips for 2020 at this point in time. So let's just take a look at that. Uh, how to write songs. Call me maybe deconstructed, right? Uh, can song lyrics predict hits, you know? And this is you know, song lyrics of the 1950s. So, I mean, basically what happens is when you have an open library like this, you know, you can open a PDF, you can take a look at this. But I, I love I love looking at it because basically what it's built on, it's built on data. You see this right here? Built on data, folks. I mean, we're just going to open this PDF here. But, you know, um, we're just going to open a PDF. So if we... Um, Oh, well, never mind on that. I don't want that. Forget that. So if you have, uh, you know, a certain amount of data. And also, remember, music only has eight keys, right? It's only got eight. I mean, when you, when you take a look at this, so let's just, let's just take a look at it real quick. So if you have, you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? That's those are the notes that you can deal with. That's it. There are no other notes other than A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, everyone says, "Oh, well, you have the sharps and flats." Yes, there are. There's A sharp, there's B flat. B sharp is actually C. So B and C, C flat is actually B. You know, C sharp, D flat. You know, E and F. You know, there's no sharps, flats, F and G. So those are the things you have to deal with. Right. So how does that work? Well, the the easiest thing to do when you're creating a database is to take a, a simple, a simple thing is to take the number, right? What they call a count of each note. Right. So that's what I would start out with. I would start out with a song, maybe a top 100 hit, whatever it is. Take the count of each note. How many A's are there? How many B's? How many C's? How many D's? How many E's? How many F's? How many G's? How many A sharps? B sharps? Or um, B flats? How many uh, C sharps? How many D flats? How many D sharps? How many E flats? How many F sharps? How many G flats? How many G sharps? Right? So you, you have all those. And then I would take the count of that and figure out, okay, there's a count. Then what you can do is you can take, so that would be the count of each number, each, each note. Then I would say um, the adjoining note, right? So which one adjoins the other one? Is there an E next to an F? Is there an F sharp next to a G? Is there an, you know, so all those different, all those different combinations. Now that's a lot of combinations, right? Basically, basically eight, eight to the 10th. I mean, there's a lot of combinations there. But, you know, you, you could see if there's, you know, like one that actually stands out and that's the, the adjoining note on either side or, you know, uh, and, and the thing is also then next is going to be the timing, right? What's the timing on that? How, how does the timing work? So all these things, you can start to build a literal database of music and, and that, 
And then you can sit there and say, okay, well, what's the top 100 hit? Oh, this. Of course, the top 100 hit, this one. Is there any similarities between those? Is there any similarities that, you know, of timing? Is there any similarities between a key? Is there any similarities between the number of notes? All these things go into, you know, how that all works. So I just, you know, thought I'd throw that out at you as saying a lot of people, because a lot of people have told me in the past that, you know, data is data, but you can do any, you can, you can make anything data. You can make anything data, anything, name it, email me, say, Chris, can you make this data? Yeah, you can. Here's how it's done. You know, you can actually a step-by-step a, a -step approach on all those things that go along with that. So this is what I want to leave you with is that. One, from the project management point of view, because that's what we talked about in the beginning, is requirements are important as a part of a resource of project management, number one, right? The second part we talked about, dental insurance claims, is know what your explanation of benefits says and how much you really owe. That's really important. And finally, the last part was music is data. Anything can be data even music because music can be the can you go down you can drill down into music to the point where you can see it where you can take it and numerically define the sheet of music numerically define it so all these things go into what's going on and those are the things that have to do with sharing and that's what i wanted to share with you uh this thanksgiving week and Please have a great Thanksgiving. You know, please spend time with your family. Please tell them that you love them. Please, 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 you know, give as much as you can, share as much as you can, and be as patient as tolerant as you can with your family because chances are something's going to crop up and you need to during the holidays because it always does. And, you know, there, there's things last, last Christmas, we didn't have any heat for three, four days during Christmas. Not a lot of fun. It was very cold here. So uh, it's, it's those types of things. You just have to be kind of patient at times and, you know, a lot of tolerance and it just all works. So with that, I'm going to tell, I'm going to say to you that love is extremely important. And when you learn something and then you offer that information to somebody else, you value them as a person and you also help educate them in the way of maybe how not to do things and, and, and share with them and help them in their lives. If you impact one person, one person in your life, think of how many times that person will impact other people and how those people will impact other people. And all of a sudden you have a, a lot better world because that is what it's all about is sharing. You must share. Even if people don't want to listen, sooner or later, they'll listen. Sooner or later, it'll, it'll just, all you're doing is planting the seed, letting it grow. It'll probably turn out that they'll say it's their idea, but who cares? As long as it helps them to conduct themselves in the society in which they are. So folks, please learn, offer, value, and educate. Love is the answer. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Take care. Bye.